الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد continue our readings in Aqidah Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah by the great scholar and Imam Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Salih al-Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala we have come to the portion about believing in the angels of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the author, he says, Faslun, wa nu'minu bi malaikatillahi ta'ala. And we believe in the angels of Allah the Most High. Wa annahum ibadun mukramun. La yasbiquunahu bil qawli wa hum bi amrihi ya'malun. And that they are honored slaves of Allah. And they do not precede him in speech. And uh, by his command, they act and implement they act and implement. So we begin discussing now after the discussion related to Al-Imanu Billahi Azza wa Jal, believing in Allah. Now the second pillar from the great pillars of Al-Iman is to believe in the angels of Allah Azza wa Jal. And all of these six pillars that we are discussing here from the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Al-Imanu Billahi wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rasulihi wa Yawm Al-Akhir وَلِمَانُ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ The six pillars of Al-Iman that are well known. This is the foundation and the fundamental of the creed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah as has preceded. But the point to make now and to remind my noble brothers, Barakallah Fikum, that after that first principle is established, the pillar of believing in Allah Azza wa Jal, all of the other pillars after that, they're based upon that and proceeding from that. And it's clear here, what the author he's saying, وَنُؤْمِنُ بِمَلَائِكَةِ اللَّهِ We believe in the angels of Allah. We believe in the angels of Allah. And like this, Allah, as well, he has mentioned in his book, whenever he mentions these principles together in a number of verses in the Noble Qur'an, he will mention believing in Allah and uh, believing in the last day and believing in his angels and believing in his books and believing in his messengers. So the, the angels, they're the angels of Allah. And we believe in them based upon our belief in Allah. And the books there are the books, the revelation of Allah. And we believe in them based upon our belief in Allah. And the prophets and messengers, they are the prophets and messengers of Allah. And we believe in them based upon our belief in Allah. And likewise, the last day, the day of resurrection, the day of judgment and accountability, this is the day for, for the meeting of Allah. For the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, believing in the decree and the power and authority and command of Allah Azza wa Jal and His supreme will. And that nothing happens except with His knowledge and permission and according to what He has allowed in His will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So believing in Allah, this is the foundation and the fundamental. And based upon that, likewise, we believe in His angels. Based upon that, likewise, we believe in His angels. Qullun amana billahi wa malaikatihi. And in this manner. And likewise, whenever the Prophet ﷺ, he was asked about Al-Iman, Akhbilni an al-Iman, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-Iman and Tu'mina Billahi wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rusulihi until the end of that portion of the narration. The point is that believing in Allah is the foundation. And this is the most important affair to have the proper creed and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be able to single him out for all of his rights, tabaraka wa ta'ala, and his lordship, and his command, and his authority, and his power, and his knowledge, and his wisdom, all of his beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection, and likewise to single him out with all actions of love, and devotion, and servitude, and surrender, and submission, with hope, and fear, and trust, and reliance, and sincere devotion, and servitude, and uh, believing in that which he has ordered us to believe in, and from that is believing in his angels, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, al-imanu bil malaika to believe in the angels. We mentioned a principle here in general that will benefit us bi idnillahi ta'ala in this chapter and the chapters to come. And this chapter here and the chapters to come. Al-imanu bil malaika is to believe in the angels. It means ijmalin fi ma ujmil wa tafsirin fi ma fusil. Ijmalin fi ma ujmil wa tafsirin fi ma fusil. To believe in the angels, meaning to believe in them in general, and that which has been mentioned generally in the authentic text, and to believe in the details and that which has come in detail. 
and and to but even detail and the detailed evidence is in text and the detailed information and and that which is come in detail ijmal and fima ujmil wa tafsilan fima fusil ijmal and fima ujmil wa tafsilan fima fusil so we believe in the angels in general and that which is come in general and in specific detail and that which has come in detail and that which has come in detail and there are a number of issues to, to discuss here to summarize in, in, in general there are the the existence of the angels the existence of the angels and then likewise their names and also their numbers and also their descriptions and also their functions and the actions that they have been entrusted to perform by the command and permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. so the angels they are the angels of Allah Azza wa Jal, a creation that is a creation from Allah, Ibadu Mukramun. They are honorable, noble slaves that Allah He has created. That Allah He has created. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Khuliqat al Malaikatu min Nur. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned the angels, they're created from light. So they're a creation that exists. They're a creation that exists from the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. And uh, their name is the Al Malaika. Al Malaika, angels. And the singular form of that is Malik. Malik with a fatha on the lamb. Malakun. Malak wa malaika. If you change the harakah on the lamb, it will change the meaning on the singular on the singular form. If you change the harakah on the lamb from a fatha to a kasra, it changes the meaning. We have the meme and the lamb and the calf. The meme and the lamb and the calf. If you have a fatha on the meme and the lamb, you say malak. This means Angel, this means angel. But if you have a, a fatha on the mim and a kasr, you say marik, marik. This means king. This means king. So we're not talking about al marik. We're not talking about the king. We're talking about al marik, the angels. So the word al marik it means angel, but also it's ism jins. So it's originally ha it has a meaning. It has a singular meaning, but also it has. A general meaning. So it could be used to refer to the plural as well. Any of the, the, the species of angels. Al-Malik. But the specific plural is Malaika. Malaika. And from here the people of Naras they mentioned that the word Malaika. It comes from the word Aluka. The word Aluka. Al-Aluka. It, it means Ar-Risala. It means Ar-Risala. And the angels. They are, they are created for a purpose and wisdom. That Allah Azza wa Jal. He knows and he has made them. He has made the messengers. He has made the messengers with wings, two, three, and four. Uh, and as Allah, He likes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He mentioned, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the beginning of Surah Al-Fatir. Alhamdulillah, Fatir al-Samawati wal-Ard, ja'il al-Malaika rusulan. Uri ajnihatin mathna wa thulatha wa ruba'a, yazidu fil khalqi ma yasha, inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Alhamdulillah, Fatir al-Samawati wal-Ard. All praises to Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Ja'il al-Malaika rusulan. Who has made the angels messengers. Uri ajniha. That ha he has made the angels messengers that have, they possess wings. Mathna wa thulatha wa ruba'a. Some of them with two, others with three, and some with four. Yazid wa fil khalqi ma yasha. And Allah, he increases in his creation as he wills. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Indeed, Allah, he has the ability to do all things. So we believe in the angels. This is the issue here. We read what the author he mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, keeping in mind the general belief in that which has come in general and the detailed, specific belief in that which has come in detailed and specifically. This is with regards to their names, Al Asma, and also their numbers, Al A'dad, and also the Osaf, the, their descriptions, their descriptions and their traits, Al Osaf, and also their functions and the actions that they perform and uh, the deeds that they have been entrusted to by the command of Allah. Al-Wadha'if. Al-Wadha'if. These four affairs here and uh, under these issues here are a number of uh, of topics likewise. So again, the author, he says, نُؤْمِنُوا بِمَلَائِكَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَأَنَّهُمْ عِبَادُ مُقْرَمُونَ لَا يَسْبِقُونَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ وَهُمْ بِأَمْرِهِ يَعْمَلُونَ that we believe in the angels of Allah the Most High and that they are honored slaves and they do not precede him in speech and by his command they act. And by his command they act. Meaning that the angels, they do not have free will. From the traits of the angels is that they do what they are commanded. and They do not speak 
except with the permission of Allah and that which Allah has allowed. And they do not move or act except at the command of Allah and that which Allah has permitted. They do not disobey Allah and that which He has ordered them. They do not disobey Allah and that which He has ordered them and they do whatever they are commanded. Allah, He mentioned about those angels likewise. And we do not descend and we do not descend except at the command of your Lord. So the angels, they're honored slaves, and they're noble, and they're pious and pure, and they are righteous, and they are good, and they do whatever they are commanded. And they do whatever they are commanded. They do not disobey the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. The author, he says, خَلَقَهُمْ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مِن نُور This portion here is missing from some of the texts that we have. The words, min nur. Min nur. If this is missing from the text that you have, then you should add it there. It should be there. You find it? خَلَقَهُمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Is it in yours? You don't have the text. Who has the, the text? Do you have it? It doesn't have it in there. You add it there. After the word ta'ala, you put a mark like this. It's called lahak. A lahak that points to the side, and then on the side you write min nur. Min nur. And this is something that's missing in, in some of the prints, but it's not missing in all of them. And it's intended to be here. Allah the Most High created them from light. So, and they established His worship and they complied to Him in obedience. They established His worship and complied to Him in obedience. He mentions that about them, that Allah, He has created them from light. And they have established His worship and they comply in obedience to Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are not too proud to worship Him, nor are they weary or tired in His worship. And they glorify His praises in the night and the day. And they never slacken or fall weak. They never slacken or, or fall weak or become bored. And they do not become tired in the worship and devotion. Uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala خَلَقَهُمْ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ مِن نُور The author, he says that Allah the Most High has created the angels from light. This is in reference to a narration that is that is narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha authentic narration uh, on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that uh, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said خُلِقَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ مِن نُور that the angels they are created from light وَخُلِقَ الْجَان مِن مَارِجٍ مِن نَار and the, the jinn, they are created from, uh, the, from the blazing flame of the fire. From the blazing flame of the fire. وَخُلِقَ آدَم مِمَّا أُسِفَ لَكُمْ مِمَّا أُسِفَ لَكُمْ And Adam, he was created from what has been described for you. Meaning, well known, what, he, what Adam has created. He's created from the clay. And his progeny are created from sperm, the mixed fluid, which is well known. The shahid, what the author is saying, is mentioned here in this authentic narration from the Prophet that the angels, they are created from light. The angels, they're created from, from light. The author, he says, And Allah, he has concealed them from us, so therefore we do not see them. Meaning that this is from the belief and the unseen. Believing in the angels is from Al Imanu Bil Ghaib. What Iman and Nafi' who are Imanu Bil Ghaib. Al Iman and Nafi' who are Al Imanu Bil Ghaib. And from Al Imanu Bil Ghaib, from believing in the unseen is believing in the angels. And the belief, the Iman that is beneficial, that will benefit a person in this life and in the hereafter, is believing in the unseen. As for whenever the unseen becomes seen, meaning like at the time of death, whenever a person is certain and he sees the angels at this time, believing will not benefit him if he did not believe before. And no righteous deeds that will not benefit him had he not performed them before. Had he not performed them before. So he's saying here that the angels, Allah Azza wa Jal, he has concealed them from us. So we are not able to see them. But, but possibly, but maybe Allah... Or sometimes Allah, He will reveal them to some of His slaves. And in some people, certain times, certain individuals may be allowed to see the angels. May be allowed to see the angels. فَقَدْ رَأَى أَنَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ جِبْرِيلَ عَلَى سُورَتِهِ لَهُ سِتُّ مِيَةٍ 
janah qad sadda al ufuq because indeed the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he saw jibril the best of the angels in his true form he saw jibril in his true form and he had 600 wings and they had blocked the entire horizon and he meaning at the the vast the vast large size uh, of uh, of this angel the angel jibril alayhi salam that him his body and his wings had blocked the entire horizon had had blocked the entire horizon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he referred to this uh, in, in his book subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, surah an-najm and allah he mentioned in this chapter wan najmi idha hawa ma dalla sahibukum wa ma ghawa wa ma yantiqu an al-hawa in huwa illa wahyun yuha and Allah he says, I swear by the star whenever it goes down or whenever it vanishes that your companion, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has neither gone astray nor has he erred, nor does he speak of his own desires. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. It is only a revelation revealed. Allamahu shadid al quwa And he has been taught, meaning this Quran, by one with might and power, meaning in reference to Jibreel. It is Jibreel who has descended with the Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching, teaching him the revelation at the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allamahu shadid al quwa dhu mirratin fastawa, one free from any defect in body and mind. Then he, meaning Jibreel, in his real shape, as created by Allah, rose and became stable. While Jibreel he was in the highest part of the horizon. Thumma dana fatadalla. And then he approached and came closer, meaning Jibreel, he came close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدَنَا And he was at a distance of two bows, of two bows length or even nearer. فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى And so at this time Allah revealed to his slave Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that which was revealed, meaning by way of the noble angel Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. So this is one of those times Whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw Jibreel in his, in his true shape that Allah had created him. And it's been, uh, it's been narrated by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu and corrected in Bukhari and Muslim that he said, Inna Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ra'a Jibreel lahu situmiya janah. That indeed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw Jibreel, he had 600 wings. He had 600 wings. So this is established in, in Sahih Bukhari and in Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Jibreel and that Jibreel he had 600 wings. This narration also has been connected by Imam Ahmed with a, a longer wording and been declared authentic by Sheikh al-Labani rahimahullah. And in this narration he says, رضي الله عنه رأى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جبريل على سورته وله ستمية جناح. The the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he saw Jibril and his shape that he was created and his and his and his true shape and form that he was created and he had six hundred wings. كل جناح منه قد سد الرفق. Every wing, every one of his wing had blocked the entire horizon. Had blocked. The entire horizon. This is what the author he's referring to here. This is what the author, Rahimahullah, he's referring to here. Yaskutu min janahihi min at-tahawil wa durru wa liyaqut ma Allahu bihi alim. And falling from his wings, and whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him, he saw him in this large shape, in this manner, blocking the entire, entire horizon with 600 wings. With 600 wings. Allahu Akbar, mentioning likewise that all different colors from pearls and rubies and gems are falling from his wings. Many different, wonderful, and beautiful colors that was also seen. Any from him, uh, alayhi salatu was salam. Alayhi salatu was salam. And it's been uh, corrected by Imam al Bukhari from the Hadith Aisha radiallahu anha that she says, Ra'a and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Jibreel ala suratihi maratain. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Jibreel in his true shape and form two times. Two times. Both of them are mentioned in. In Surah Al Najm, the first the first time is that which that, that which was mentioned here, whenever the the re, the revelation came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The other time after this, the verses continue, and Allah Azza wa Jalla He mentioned about His Prophet. And indeed, He, meaning the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He saw Jibril at a second time, 
at a second descent. عند سدرة المنتهى near the سدرة المنتهى which is the low tree of the utmost boundary over the seventh heaven beyond which none can pass. عندها جنة المأوى and uh, near it is the paradise of abode. Meaning also in the the Isra and the Mi'raj, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw Jibril again in his form that he was created. As for the other times, then he's seen him the majority of the time as in the image of a man. This is what the author he's mentioning now. So this is what he's saying. فَقَدْ رَأَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ جِبْرِيلَ عَلَى سُورَتِهِ يَلَهُ سِتُّ مِيَا جَنَا قَدْ سَدِ الْأُفُقِ That the, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he saw Jibreel in his true shape and form. He had 600 wings that had blocked the entire horizon. وَتَمَثَّلَ جِبْرِيلُ لِي مَرْيَمَ بَشَرًا سَوِيًّا فَخَافَبَتْهُ وَخَافَبَهَا فَخَافَبَتْهُ وَخَافَبَهَا And likewise, uh, Jibreel, he came to Maryam. In the shape and the form of a of an upright human being, and she spoke to him, and he spoke to her, and she spoke to him, and he spoke to her. And this is in reference to what Allah Azza wa had mentioned of the the story of Maryam and Surat Maryam. And Allah He mentioned Subhanahu wa Taala in His noble book, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشْرًا سَوِيَّةً. And we sent to her, meaning to Maryam, alayhi salam. Jibreel, and he appeared before before her in the form of a man in all respects. And he appeared before her in the form of a man, and exactly and precisely. She said, indeed, I seek refuge. She said, verily, I seek refuge with the most gracious from you, if you are truly one who fears Allah Azza wa Jal. So at this time, Jibreel, he said to Maryam that I am only a messenger from your Lord. And I have come to announce to you the gift of a righteous son. So she said, how can I have a son when no man has touched me? Nor have I been unchaste. Nor have I been unchaste. He said, and he Jibreel, alayhi salam, so it will be. Your Lord has said that that is easy for me. And Allah, he says, and we wish to appoint him as a sign to mankind and a mercy from us. And it is a matter that has been decreed. And it is a matter that has been decreed. So the angel Jibreel, he was seen by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his true form. And likewise, he was seen by the Prophet sallallahu and a number of his companions in the form of a man and also in the previous nations as well. Jibril he was seen like here. We see as the Shaykh is mentioning by Maryam, by Maryam, the mother of Isa alayhi salam and she spoke to him and he spoke to her and she spoke to him and he, he spoke to her. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أصحابه أنه جبريل أنه جبريل and likewise he came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم while he was with his companions in the form of a man and no one knows who he was he came in the form of a man no one uh, no one knew who he was and there was no apparent traces of traveling and he had an extremely white garment on and likewise his hair was extremely black until he said in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so close that he put his knees up to his knees. That he put his knees up to the knees of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he put his, his palms on his lap. And then he spoke to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet spoke to him. And then after he left, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed his companions that indeed that was Jibreel. Innahu Jibreel atakum yu'allimukum dinakum. Indeed, that was Jibreel. Yeah, he, he said to Umar, Yeah, Umar, I tell you, man is sail. Umar, do you know who the questioner was? And then Umar, he said, Allahu wa rasuluhu adam. Allah and his messenger know better. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Innuhu Jibreel, atakum yu'allimukum dinakum. Indeed, that was Jibreel. 
the noble angel. He came to teach you your religion. And he's referring to the well-known narration that we all ha have memorized and know very well. Alhamdulillah, Hadith Jibreel. Whenever he came and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the, the religion. About the religion. So the, the angels, they are from the affairs of the unseen. And the people, they're not able to see them. Although if Allah wills for certain individuals and in certain circumstances, they will be able to see them. They will be able to see them. But people in these days should not hasten and uh, should not think that everything that appears in front of them is an angel. Because sometimes what will appear in front of them is a devil claiming to be an angel to mislead the people in the lights like this and so on and so forth. So just because a person maybe he will see something strange or think that he sees something in the air or a light or someone around him in the lights like this, this does not always necessarily mean that that will be an angel. The origin is that the angels from the affairs of the unseen, you're not able to see them. You're not able to see them. And they will only be seen a certain times and for certain people in certain situations and the origin is that they will not be seen except whenever a person dies except whenever a person dies uh, and the angels they will either come granting glad tidings or they will come to punish and to smite the face in the back so the author he says and we believe that the angels they have actions they have deeds that they have been entrusted to perform. They have been entrusted to perform. This is with regards to the wadha'if, the functions and the actions that the angels, they perform. He mentioned a number of them. And he says, فَمِنْ هُمْ جِبْرِيلِ And this is, uh, and he's going to mention some of their names likewise as well. And either, uh, some of them, some of them, they, uh, they have special actions that they perform by the command of Allah. And even more specific, some of them have also names that they're known by now this is what he does he's discussing here فَمَنْهُمْ جِبْرِيلْ الْمُوَكَّلْ بِالْوَحْيِ يَنْزِلُ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ أَنْبِيَائِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ and from them is Jibreel the one who is entrusted to the revelation and he descends with the revelation from Allah upon whomever Allah wills from his prophets and messengers from his prophets and messengers. Jibreel, he's the most noble and the best of the angels. And he's been entrusted to the best of affairs. And that is to bring the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the prophets and messengers. Allah, he mentioned in his book, نَزَلَ بِهِ أَرُوحُ الْأَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ أَرُوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيًّا مُبِينَ And uh, the trustworthy spirit, the trustworthy soul had descended with had descended with it, meaning Jibreel. He's known as Ar-Ruhu Al-Amin, the trustworthy Ruh. And also is known as Ruh Al-Qudus, the holy, the holy and the pure Ruh, any of the spirit or the soul. This is in reference to Jibreel, alayhi salam. And uh, the trustworthy spirit had descended with it upon your heart, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that you may be from the warners, any of the mundhirin. The nadir is a rasul, the nudur or the mundhirin, they are the Rusul. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he received revelation. And it was Jibreel who descended with that, the one who is trustworthy. The one who is trustworthy. Descending with that revelation by the command of Allah Azza wa Jal from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. بِلِسَانِ عَرَبِيًّ مُبِينَ In the clear Arabic in the clear Arabic language. In the clear Arabic language. The Shaykh, he says, وَمِنْهُمْ Mikail الْمُوَكَّلْ بِالْمَطَرِ وَالنَّبَانِ And from them likewise, another angel. His name is Mikail. His name is Mikail. Jibril and Mikael, these angels, these names here, they're pronounced in a number of different ways. You can say Jibril or Jibrail, and there are many other ways to pronounce the, this, uh, this word likewise. Uh, some of the most famous or well-known ways, Jibril and Jibrail. But there are other pronunciations which are correct likewise. And also Mikael, it has come in the Quran, Mikael, Mikael, Mikael is Mikael. Mikael is Mikael. There's a number of ways to pronounce uh, the name of this angel likewise. So the angel Mikael or Mikael, he's al muwakkil bil matari wa nabad. He's the one who's been entrusted to the rain and vegetation. He's been entrusted to the rain and vegetation. And this is from the command of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, Ghaniyun Hamid. He does not need anything and none of his creation benefits him. And he's not in need of any of his creation whatsoever. And that none of his creation helps him or supports him or benefits him in any manner. Allah Azza wa Jal, he is free of all needs, worthy of all praise. 
but he has created his creation and he has set in charge of these affairs uh set in charge of these affairs some of his angels from a wisdom from him subhanahu wa ta'ala from a wisdom from him subhanahu wa ta'ala and they dispose of affairs at the command of allah azza wa jal at the command of allah azza wa jal from that mikail he is in charge of the affairs related to the rain and the and the crops the rain and the crops ومن هم اسرافيل الموكل بالنفخ في السور حين حين الصعق والنشور and from the angels likewise is when his name is Israfil and he's been entrusted to blowing in the trumpet whenever the the whenever the two the two whenever the hunt whenever it will be blown it will be blown twice a sack when you're sure and whenever the trumpet will be blown nefcha to sack nefcha to a sack and this is whenever he will be ordered and he will blow on the trumpet on the horn and everything that is alive will will fall unconscious and die and then he will blow another time and then he will blow into it will be blown into a, a second time and they'll be brought back to life and they'll be brought back to life so the one who is in charge and entrusted with this affair his name is israfil he's a great noble and ah he's a great noble angel who's been entrusted to the issue of a nafkhu fi sur a sur meaning the horn or the trumpet and he's the one who is entrusted to blow to blow there will be two nafkhatu saq and nafkhatu and nushur or ba'th when nushur one time it will be blown and everything alive will die everything alive will fall unconscious or die and uh, then after that there will be another time it will be blown again and everything will be brought back to life everyone will be brought back to life in a new life and ready to be taken to account these issues inshallah they will come in our discussion with regards to the belief in the last day so here are three angels mentioned by names with specific functions jibrail wa mikail wa israfil Jibrail, Mikael, Israfil. Jibrail, he's entrusted to the revelation, the best of the angels, the most, the most noble. And likewise, Mikael, he's entrusted to the affair of the the rain and the crops. And Israfil, he's entrusted to to blowing on the trumpet on the day of resurrection at the command of Allah Azza wa Jal to establish the hour, to establish the hour. And these three angels, they've been they have been mentioned by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam directly. In a narration that has come in Sahih Muslim from the Hadith Aisha radiallahu anha, she was asked about how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to begin the night prayer. How did he used to open the night prayer? And he before actually beginning his recitation after making the takbir, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And what was the supplication that he would make? And she mentioned radiallahu anha, kana idha qama min al-layl. That whenever he stood up for the night prayer, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would open up his prayer, meaning the opening supplication after takbirat al-ihram. It's called du'a al-istiftah. We took this in the book Umdat al-Hakam. There's a number of them. Here's one specifically in the night prayer. She said that he would open his night prayer like this: sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allahumma Rabb Jibrail. وميكائيل وإسرافيل فاطر السماوات والأرض عالم الغيب والشهادة أنت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون اهدني لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم أو oh الله the Lord of Jibrail and Mikael and Israfil the creator of the heavens and the earth the knower of the unseen and the seen indeed you judge amongst your slaves and that which they differ God, therefore, guide me to that which they differ into the truth by your permission. Indeed, you guide whom you will to the straight path. Indeed, you guide whom you will to the straight path. This is a supplication that one he will make every night. Every night, praying the night prayer, or praying the witted prayer. And he, after the Isha time, sometime before the rising of the Fajr, he will open the prayer in this manner with the supplication. And uh, there are great benefits in reflecting and pondering over these meanings. And the Shahid, for now, is the mention of these three angels by name, Jibrail, Mikail, and Israfil. So these are from the angels that we believe in specifically. And they have functions that they are entrusted to, that they perform, that we believe in specifically.
that we believe in specifically. There's an angel. His name is Jibreel. He's the best of them. He descended on the prophets and messengers with, with revelation, with revelation, with guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal, with guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal. There's an angel likewise entrusted, entrusted to the rain and entrusted to the vegetation. And the angel here is Rafil. Is Rafil, he's the one entrusted to, to blowing on the trumpet, blowing on the horn to announce the day of resurrection. And then the Shaykh, he says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَلَكُوا الْمَوْتِ الْمُوَكَّلُوا بِقَبْلِ الْأَرْوَاحِ عِنْدَ الْمَوْتِ And from them is the angel of death. And from them is the angel of death who has been entrusted to taking the souls at the time of death. Who have been entrusted to taking the souls at the time of death. And to reflect and ponder over, the, over these affairs is of, of utmost importance. Likewise, he's going to mention there are also angels that are entrusted to bringing the souls into the wombs uh, uh, of the mothers at the time at the time of creation, at the time of creating, creating the, the, the fetus and bringing life to the womb, there's an angel that will bring the life, that will bring the life and bring the soul by the permission of Allah. And whenever Allah decrees that that life will end, there's another angel that will come to take it, that will take it, that will take it. And you cannot run from the angels and you cannot hide from them. You cannot run from the angels and you cannot hide from them. Rather, you should be shy from them because they're noble, they're noble angels. And from the benefits of knowing that they're noble, if you are required to honor your guest, then from the best and noble, from the best and most noble of guests are the angels that are with you, are the angels that are with you. So you should try to honor them and make sure they don't write anything against you that you feel shame to find on the day of resurrection, that you will be shame to find uh, on the day of resurrection. Allah He says, "Kuliyat wafakum madak wal mauti ladi wukila bikum, thumma ila Rabbikum turjaun." That in, say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, malak wal maut alladhi wukira bikum. That in, say to them, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the angel of death will take your souls. He will take your souls, the one who has been entrusted to you. Thumma ila rabbikum turja'un. And then to your Lord you will return. And then to your Lord you will, you will return. So there's an angel of death who takes the souls. And likewise, lahu a'wan. He has also helpers. And it's mentioned that the angel of death, he is the one who takes the souls. And as soon as he takes the soul, after that, there are other angels ready to take the soul from him. And they will shroud it and they will rise with it. And they will rise with it in the manner that is well known. And those souls that are pious and righteous and pure and clean, they're honored. They're honored and they're shrouded in the best manner. And those who are, those who are tainted and wicked and evil, then they are not honored. Rather, they're disgraced. What the other billah? What the other billah? So a believer, he must... Remember these affairs. He has a soul, and there's an angel who brought his soul, and there's an angel who will take his soul. So no one knows whenever the angel will come for his soul. And uh, that's not important to know, but what is important is what state am I in whenever he comes? What state are you in whenever he comes? So for a person to be aware of his soul and to take care of his soul by cultivating his soul upon sincere faith, and piety and righteousness and compliance to the command of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Shaykh, he says, وَمَنْهُمْ مَلَكُ الْجِبَالِ الْمُوَكَّلْ بِهَا And from them, and from the angels likewise, the angel, the angel of the mountains, the angel of the mountains who has been entrusted to the mountains, meaning there's an angel that is entrusted to the mountains. There's an angel that has been entrusted to the mountains. It's come from the Hadith Aisha radiallahu anha. Mentioning the story of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whenever he went to Taif, and he, after he, after uh, after Abu Talib had died, and after uh, after Khadija radiallahu anha she had died, and, and uh, the harm has become great, and the persecution became severe. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he went to Taif, uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in order to call those people there and to see if they will believe in him and support him and follow him, and they persecuted him and belittled him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and whenever he was leaving, whenever he's leaving, Jibreel, he appeared to him, and also another angel, and also another angel, and uh, that angel, he was Malik al-Jibal, he, he was the angel of the, of the mountains, and he said to the Prophet, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in shi'ta, and utbika alayhim al akhshabain he said, if you like, then I will cause these two mountains to crush them and to fall on them, and the Prophet, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, bal arju an yukhrij allahu the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, rather give them respite. I hope that Allah will bring from their progeny and from their lineage those who will worship Allah alone and not associate any partners with him. The point is that the, the, the angel of the mountains came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So from here we know 
that there is an angel who is entrusted to the mountains. The Sheikh, he says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَالِكٌ خَازِنُ النَّارِ And from them, and from the angels, one his name is Malik. This is another one we know by his name. This is another angel we know by his name. خَازِنُ النَّارِ He is the, the guardian of the hellfire. He is the, the guardian uh, of, of the hellfire. And he's the caretaker uh, of the hellfire. And the people of Nanas, they mentioned that, the, the guardians or the caretakers, those who are entrusted to the hellfire, they're angels. And uh, it's been mentioned uh, that there's a number of them. And uh, the, they are known as Zabania. They are known as Zabania. Zabania, meaning they're the guardians of, of the hellfire. And uh, the, the head of them are 19. And uh, the leader of them is Malik. And the leader of them is Malik. And uh, has come a number of evidences with regards to Malik and uh, these other angels, which are the guardians of the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكْ لِيَقَضِي عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكْ قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ That in the, in, the, in the hellfire, the people in the hellfire, they will call. They will call Malik. They will call out for him and they will call him to call on Allah to, uh, to end their life. To end their life. And he just, just called on your Lord so he will, he, will, he will do away with us. So he will kill us. Because they're, they're not living a life of pleasure and they will not die so the pain will cease. They're in the hellfire eternally in punishment and disgrace and, and torture and torment. And he will say to them, إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ they said, indeed, we came to you with the truth. And the majority of you dislike the truth. Dislike the truth. So they'll be belittled. So the point is that there is an angel. His name is Malik. And he is Khazin and nar And likewise, there are others along with him. And Allah, he mentioned about them. This is in reference to those other angels. Let, 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 let them call. Let them call his helper or his counsels. You need anyone he wants to call. You need those who are the one who was harming the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Indeed, we're going to call Azabania, the the guardians of of the hellfire." And Abu Jahl, whenever he's harming the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then we will call the guardians of the hellfire. Call your helpers. Then we will call the guardians of the hellfire. Then we'll call the guardians of of the hellfire. What do you have to So Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned uh, he mentioned about. Uh, about those angels, those who are the guardians of, of the hellfire. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, qu anfusakum, wa ahlikum naran, wa quduha anasu wal hijara, alayha malaika, ghilaadun shidad, alayha malaikatun ghilaadun shidad, la ya'asuna allaha ma amarahum, wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun. Then he, that this, these angels say, oh you who believe, save yourselves and your family from a fire whose fuel is men and stones. You, uh, from the fire who's filled with men and stones uh, around this fire and in charge of this fire malaika ghilad when she died they're stern and severe they're stern and severe la ya'asuna Allah ma amarahum they do not disobey Allah and what he has commanded wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun and they do whatever they have been commanded Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in his book wa ma adraka ma saqar la tubqi wa la tadhar lawahatu lil bashar alayha Allah, he says, and what will cause you to know? And, and how will you know what is the blazing fire? It does not leave any sinner behind, and nor does it leave any skin, except it's burnt and darkened. Except it's burnt and black. That it burns up the skin until it's black. It burns up and blackens the skin. And then Allah, he says, And uh, in charge of the hellfire are 19. Or 19. We have not set uh, as protectors of the fire or guardians of the fire except for except for angels. Except for angels. This has been connected by Imam Muslim from the hadith of Ibn Masur radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned on the day of resurrection yu'ta bi jahannam yawma idhin laha sab'una alfa zimam that on the day of resurrection waji'a yawma idhin in reference to the statement of Allah Azza wa Jalla in Surah Al-Fajr, and on that day, on the day of resurrection, the fire will be bright. The blazing fire, the Jahannam, will be bright. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, يُؤْتَى يُؤْتَى بِجَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَ إِذٍ لَهَا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ زِمَامٍ That the hell fire will be bright on that day, and it has 70,000 rains. It has 70,000 rains. 
مع كل زمام 70 ألف ملك يجرونها and at every rain the 70,000 angels pulling it meaning that the hellfire is something vast and large that the hellfire is something vast and large and likewise the numbers of the angels are many there are, imagine this great number here these are just in, the, the, from those who are entrusted to bringing the hellfire and others there are 19 a specific number that are entrusted to the, guardian, the guardians of the hellfire. So, as I mentioned before, in general, and that which has come in general, and in detail, and that which has come in detail, with regards to these names, the names, and likewise, the numbers, and also with regards to the attributes, and as well as their, as their functions. All of this is coming and mentioned in these texts. The Sheikh is mentioned in, in, a, in a very brief and summarized manner. So, we mentioned some evidences supporting that which he has mentioned here for the benefit of seeing the truth and uh, taking an admonition and he because we believe in angels and if we were to try to bring all of the evidences in the quran and the sunnah with regards to the texts that have come about the angels there's so many there's so many verses in the book of allah about angels so many verses in the book of allah about angels many times when the angels they mentioned they're mentioned they're glorifying allah they're praising allah they're glorifying Allah, they're praising Allah. And also sometimes they're making supplication and dua for the believers. And other times they're smiting the backs and the faces of, of, the, of, the, dis, of the disbelievers. If you were to see, If you were just to see, if you were just to see whenever the disbelievers, the oppressors, the wrongdoers, they're in the pains of death. They're in the pains of death and the angels are, out, are stretching out their hands. The angels are stretching out their hands. Bring out your souls. Bring out your souls. And so there's angels that will humiliate and punish those who disbelieve. Disbelief is nothing light. And disobedience, likewise, is nothing light. It's nothing light. These affairs, they're major. Allah Azza wa Jal, He has angels. And uh, those who do not believe in them, Allah, He swore by them. If you don't believe in the angels, I swear by the angels that will strip the souls of those who are wicked and evil. They'll strip the souls of those who are wicked and evil. And likewise, swearing by those angels as well, that gently take out the souls of those who believe. Of those who believe. If Allah Azza wa Jal, He swears by something, is to indicate the greatness of that affair. Allah, He swears by the angels who strip the souls of the wicked. Allah, He swears by the angels, likewise, who take the souls uh, of, of the righteous and the pious. So the souls, they will be taken. The souls, they will they will be taken. How will they be taken? This is what we should consider. And this is what we should think for. If we, love our, if we have love for ourselves, then we should think about how our soul will be taken. If we have love for our, our wife or our spouse, we have love for our son or our daughter, we should think about how their soul will be taken. Some people, they claim to love their children and their family, and they let them follow their desires and their whims, and they help them upon a foul way. And in reality, if, they, if that angel comes upon that way, it will not be nice for them. It, 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 the, the, the angels take the soul of the wicked violently. The angels take the soul of the wicked violently. Violently. Violence out of this world, not like in this life. It's another life after that. So if we love ourselves and our families, then we have to strive to cultivate ourselves first and foremost and, our, and those under our care upon al-imanu billah wa malaikatihi. Believing in Allah. And believing in his angels, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa yawmun akhir, wa al-qadri khayrihi wa sharri. This is the means of success. This is the means of safety. This is the means of happiness. This is the means of joy. To have the proper creed and to have the favor of Allah that that creed will rest in the heart until a person, he believes. And his belief is seen in his statements and his actions and his manner and his conduct and the way that he carries himself in his daily life. In his daily life, in his home, in his masjid, in his car, in his market, wherever he may be, with those who believe and with those who do not believe. Because Allah, He can see wherever we are and He can hear whatever we say. And we cannot hide from Him nor can we flee. So the only way to be safe is to flee to Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you try to call someone to help you, Sanadu Zabaniya. Sanadu Zabaniya. Allah, He will call the angels. Allah, He will call the angels. You cannot escape. So we're slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal. We're slaves of Allah Azza wa Jal. The best thing that we can do is to realize that and be a slave like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was a slave. He was a slave. He was a slave of Allah Azza wa Jal. He was a humble, obedient, thankful slave of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is how he has the high and lofty status. The high and lofty status. The revelation, the knowledge that was revealed to him, and the application of that in submission and surrender to Allah Azza wa Jal. In submission and surrender to Allah Azza wa Jal. 
So the Sheikh he says, وَمِنْ هُمْ مَلَائِكَةٌ مُوَكَّلُونَ بِالْأَجِنَّةِ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ And from the angels, there are angels that are entrusted to the, to the fetus, to the fetus in, in the wombs. And men whom, and from them, there are angels that are entrusted to the fetus uh, in, in the wombs, in the wombs. And this is also mentioned in the well-known narration in the 40 hadith. Which hadith is it? Huh? Number four, Ahsan. It's hadith number four. From the hadith, who, who, who is it? An Abi Abdul Rahman, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. Huh? From the hadith Ibn Mas'ud, what did he say? Hadathana Sadiqul Masduq. Then he, he, the, the, the one who is truthful, aided by the truth, he narrated to us. In ahadakum yujma'u khalquhu fi ba'di umihi arba'ina yawm and nutfa. That indeed one of you is gathered. His creation is gathered in the, the womb of his mother 40 days. Uh, as a, as a nulfa, as that mixed fluid, the mixed fluid, the mixed sperm fluid, in in, in the in the womb of his mother. Thumma yikunu ala qatam and then it will be a, a blood clot like that. Any of the same period, forty more days. Thumma yikunu mubqatam and then it will be a piece of flesh, a morsel of flesh. After that, any changes from that fluid, from that fluid, that mixed fluid, the male and the female inside that black space, that dark space in the womb of a woman. She's walking around and she's alive in that womb, in her stomach. That fluid turns into blood clot. And that blood clot turns into flesh. And this is 40, 40, 40. How many days? 120. Then the angel is sent to him. He's ordered with four, with, with four words, any four orders and commandments that, he, that, that, that are prescribed and ordained. بِكَتْبِ رِزْقِهِ وَأَجَلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ وَشَقِيُّنْ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ بِكَتْبِ رِزْقِهِ By writing him, prescribe it, it's written for him, uh, his, uh, his provision, وَأَجَلِهِ in his term that he will live, وَعَمَلِهِ in the deeds that he will do, will do وَشَقِيُّنْ وشقي أَوْ سَعِيدٌ Whether he's miserable or whether he's happy, whether he's from the failures and those who die in a state of disbelief or whether he is from the winners and those who die in a state of sincere faith. Whether he is miserable or whether he is whether he is is happy and successful, so this is what he's referring to here. There's an angel who's entrusted to this affair. The angel will bring the soul to the human being and uh, the and the and the and the and the womb of his mother in this manner, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us over fourteen hundred years ago. Over fourteen hundred years ago, wa kharuna wa kharuna bihifdi bani Adam, and there are others who have been entrusted to protecting. The, the children of Adam, and they're mentioned in Surah Ra'd. And this is what he's referring to here, that which is referred to in Surah Ra'd. The author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentions a few more examples of, uh, of these angels. Some of them are, are very important to, to discuss. So this portion is almost over, but if we begin to discuss them now, we'll be cut off by the Iqamah. So with that, inshallah, we suffice this evening and uh, we can take any questions or comments or corrections uh, with regards to that which has proceeded. The narration in the beginning, the one by Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned the وَخُلِقَتَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ نُورِ وَخُلِقَتَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ نُورِ The angels that are created, they're created from, from light. The angels that are created from, from light. This is collected by Ali Imam Muslim. What is the general what is the general principle in believing in the angels? How do we believe in them? Huh? Who can mention that principle? Those words right there. Ijmal and Fima Ujmil and Fima Fusil. Habib. In Arabic, in Arabic, in Arabic. Ijmalin, 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 Fima, Ujmil. What tafsilin, Fima, Fusil. Ijmalin, Fima, Ujmil. What tafsilin, Fima, Fusil. Ijmalin, Fima, Ujmil. What tafsilin, Fima, Fusil. This point here is going to come also in believing in the books and also in the messengers. So it's important to have now. That we believe in these affairs here in general and that which has come in general and in detail and that which has come in detail.
So who can mention for us some of the general meanings, uh, the general belief in the angels? Their existence, the angels, they exist, and they are created from light. They're created from light. They're a creation from Allah Azza wa Jal, ibadun, mukramun, that there are no creation from Allah Azza wa Jal, and they're created from, from light. They're created from light, and they're called malaika. They're called malaika. And the word malaika is from, uh, from aluka, with a hamza, aluka. Aluka tun. Aluka, what does aluka mean? Risala. Risala. So the malaika, they are messengers, the rusul. The malaika and the rusul. The rusul, they're messengers. They're also known as uh, safara. Kiraman, barara, safara. Safara. Safara is uh, the, the, the plural of safir or safir. And safir is also like a messenger. Like a messenger. So the the angels, they are they are messengers, and they have been entrusted uh, by the command of Allah Azza wa Jal to uh, dispose of certain affairs in the creation by the permission of Allah and at His command, by the permission of Allah and at His command. Then mudabbirati amra. This is Allah He swore by them likewise, calling them by this name. The al mudabbirat, al mudabbirat, those who are disposing of the affairs, and yet some of the affairs of the creation are entrusted to angels. That perform these functions by the command of Allah Azza wa Jal, from the wisdom of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to indicate His Majesty and His power, and His authority and command, and His supreme knowledge, and His supreme knowledge, Subhanahu wa Taala. So there are four points, likewise, that we mentioned about believing in the angels: al adad al adad the numbers, and the wala'if, the functions or their actions; al awsaf their their attributes; huh? al asma. The names, the names. So the, with the names in general, Malaika. Also, Malak. Malak. What's the difference between Malak and Malik? Huh? Malak and Malik. Malak means angel. Well, Malik, king. What if we add an alif there? We say Malik. Huh? Malik is the name of an angel likewise, right? But what does Malik mean? Also, that's from the names of Allah, right? Al-Malik and Al-Malik. Malik Yawm din So the, my point to make now is that well, look how this one word changes. It changes here by just changing the harakat from a fatha to a kisra. Or if you add an elongation, the name, it changes to another meaning. So you have Malik, which means king. And you have Malik, which means owner. Which means owner, master. It means owner, master. And then you have Malak, which is an angel, which is an angel. So three different words. They're very similar, but they're all different in their meanings. Indication of the richness and the beauty of the Arabic language and the importance to learn it properly. Because maybe we'll say uh, something quickly sometimes and not realize it. And you want to say Malak, but you say Malak. Or you want to say you, you want to say Malak, but you say Malak. So if you're not paying attention, you might say angel and you're trying to say king. Or you might say king and you're trying to say Angel, there's a difference. Somebody who knows the language who uh, identify that, and it may will it will not make sense. The context will not be proper. The context will not be proper. So this is uh, a benefit here and an encouragement to learn the Arabic language. An encouragement to learn the Arabic language. So the names malaika, the angels, and malik is the singular of that. But sometimes the word malik is referred to the plural as well. وَجَاءَ رَبُكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًا 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 So here, Al-Malik means Malaika. Doesn't mean one, doesn't, when your Lord and the angel comes, your, your Lord and the angels come. And the angels come. This is also something special to the Arabic language. It's called Ism Jins. Ism Jins. So sometimes a plural, a singular form is used, but it refers to the plural any in general, in a general sense, according to the context of the sentence. So what are some, some names of angels that you know specifically? Jibril. Huh? Israfil. Mikail. Malik. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.